Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Lawrence Training Academy. I am here with my Elite 9 TI2, and what we're going to cover today is all of the ins and outs of this sonar screen. Now I'm going to cover all of the menu options on this page here, so you can know how to use all of the features and become a pro with it like I am. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, we are looking at our sonar screen. It's just kind of a, you know, a standard basic sonar screen like you've seen um, on any other fish finder. Um, but so let's go ahead and start on all the uh, just kind of the basics of the screen um, You'll see that the bottom, you know shows across here. You've got your scale um, Right along the right hand side here, which is just the uh, the depth range that you've got as well as your Overlays in the corner now you're going to notice in the very bottom left corner here where um, it has like a little number that is your uh, your frequency that you are running on uh, currently mine says 200 because I'm running on the 200 kilohertz frequency All right, so um, to go ahead and get started here Your first option is going to be your mode, which I'm going to go over that feature last Now the next option on here is going to be your range now when you click on it You're going to see how you have this list of options on here now These are where you can set to just like a manual range as you click on it You can see how it adjusts the screen on there. It's controlling these numbers down the side now I recommend leaving it on auto which is the option right here. So that way it always keeps the bottom right there at the bottom of the screen. So that way you don't have to constantly keep going through and manually adjusting uh, that range as the depth of the water changes on you. Um, now you also have custom down here where if you click on it, um, you can go in and you can type manually type in what range you want it at. So if I click on the first one, I can say I wanted that at five, which is gonna set the first number to five. And then the next number I could type, let's say 30, that would set the bottom number to 30. So that way you can set it to whatever range you want it at. So in case you're only interested in say between 20 and 40 feet, um, you can set it uh, to that range there. And then you can just hit okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go back. Now the uh, next option is gonna be your frequency. Now um, you have your different frequencies here. Um, most of the time you're probably going to be running on either high chirp or 200 um, that's going to be more for your shallow uh, fresh water usage um, usually between you know five to you know 60 to 100 feet um, if you're going to go in really shallow water less than five feet or deeper than 100 i usually recommend running on the 83 or the medium chirp now what the chirp is is it's a whole range of frequencies that broadcast so say for example high chirp um, runs from 130 kilohertz all the way through 210 and so what that does is it cycles between all 80 frequencies to kind of just give you a better resolution image it kind of filters out a lot of that extra clutter um, and gives you better separation of targets between the fish and of the bottom and so that's why I'm going to go ahead and set mine to high chirp there and I'm going to go back and when I do that you can see how it kind of clears up a little bit here at the top now the next option is going to be your sensitivity now Usually this one I'm gonna leave on auto. Now you're gonna see how there's like a little green button down here, a green corner. When I click on it, it goes away, which means that it's deactivated. Now you're gonna see it also goes orange. Anytime you see orange, it means that that menu is on a manual mode. Anytime it is set to green, it means that you're on an auto mode. Now what you can do is you can touch on the button and you can drag it up and down to control your sensitivity scale or you can do little minor adjustments by pressing the plus and minus buttons there. Um, and so you can go through, and like I said, you can make the little adjustments whether it's on auto or manual mode, it really doesn't matter. Um, but again, I recommend running on auto just so that the unit uses its own kind of internal algorithms of the, uh, for the conditions of the water to determine what uh, frequency you, or what uh, sensitivity level you should be um, running on. And that's why, again, I recommend leaving it on a, um, an auto mode. So let's go ahead and go back. Now the next one is gonna be your color line. Now this one, it's going to usually default around 76%. Now the lower you go, uh, the more blue uh, things are gonna go be. The, the higher you go, uh, the more yellows and greens you're gonna get. Now again, I kind of recommend just leaving it right around 76%. That's kind of usually give you the best mixture of different colors on the screen. Now we can go ahead and go back here. And now the next one is you have these two options here, advanced and more options. Those will take you into um, additional features and menus in here. So if I go into advanced, now you're gonna see these different choices here. The first one is gonna be your noise rejection. 
it's going to default to low which is really going to be the option that i would normally recommend running on uh, what that is is it's going to really um, kind of filter out stuff from so say if you're getting a lot of noise interference so if you have like black lines on your screen because you're running two transducers say one at the front one on the back uh, increasing this number will help filter that out or say there's a lot of other people out on the water running sonar or if you're just getting a lot of interference from running your motor you can increase that and it will filter it out now the next one is going to be your surface clarity it too is going to generally default on low now this is a filter so keep in mind if you go too high with it it will filter objects out of the top per, uh, part of the water usually about the top five feet um, but if you're getting just a lot of clutter on there you can increase it up a little bit but again i don't normally recommend going too high with it because you will lose some fish and so let's go ahead and go back there now you have your scroll speed where you can um, it, well it defaults to normal but you can go in and you can create speed it up to make your scroll go faster or you can hit your little but minus button down here to slow it down now I usually run on mine on normal or times two depending on what I'm doing I don't really care for going much higher or lower than that um, but so I'm gonna leave mine on normal for now now let's go back now you have your ping speed now it too is going to default to max but a little trick of the trade on here is to if you're when you're kind of drop shot fishing lower it down to around 16 or 15 what that'll do is it'll help it kind of lock onto those fish and the suspended targets a little bit better on your screen um, as well as you know your jig and so if you're having a hard time picking up the jig on there drop that down a little bit and usually it'll kind of help lock it on and make it appear a little bit you know a little bit clearer on the screen make it easier to locate and then you also have your manual mode now manual mode will just basically turn off all of the auto modes like your auto sensitivity your auto range um, and that's all that really is so let's go back now you also have your more options all right here so you have your stop sonar so if we hit it it just stops the screen stops your 2d sonar from pinging off the transducer um, you know you can use it I usually recommend that if you're running off of a trolling motor and you're gonna pull the trolling motor up out of the water I like to hit stopped there um, before I pull it out so that way when I put it back in it kind of helps it lock right back onto the bottom again without any kind of delay um, but I'm going to go ahead and unstop that there. Now you have your split screens where so you've got your no split, you've got your zoom, bottom lock, and flasher. And so on here, you like I said, you've got the different options there. Now if you go and you click on zoom, what that's going to do is it's going to give you like a little split on here. Now you can, on the left side here, you can zoom in on it while the other side here will stay normal. Just that way you can kind of zoom in on certain areas of the screen. Um, on there and when you do it you're gonna see like this little line that come and comes up that little area right there is what's gonna show on the left side now let's go ahead and zoom out now you have your bottom lock but what that does it's kind of a little weird it locks onto the bottom but you'll notice that it flips your depth range um, upside down so that way it makes it a little easier to see how far off the bottom uh, certain objects are um, just a little feature they added on there make it a little bit easier to use um, on there and then of course you also have your flasher which is just kind of the standard flasher mode that, you know, Lawrence and everybody else has been making for, you know, 40, 50 years. Um, where you got your little spinning scale, you've got your range that circles around, and as objects show up on there, you see it draw a little line as it spins around the circle right there. Now, I'm gonna leave mine to no split. Now let's go back. Now you have your palette. The palette is, is just gonna be all the different colors that you can choose from. Well, most of the time it's going to default to number one which is the color palette most of you guys are used to seeing now you can go in you can change them it's kind of like a user preference type thing now i like number 13 because what that does is it turns my bottom brown so that way any like fish or anything sitting on the bottom it distinguishes between them and the bottom itself so that way the fish will show up all different colors and the bottom will be brown so that way they don't blend in with one another so let's go ahead and go back and you also have the same thing on number 14 here, um, but it turns it as a blue background instead of white. Now let's go ahead, like I said, let's go back. All right, and so now what we can do is we can turn on our overlay down scan. Well, what that does is it's going to overlay the down scan on top of the 2D sonar. Now, in my opinion, I don't really care for it too much. Um, the fish reveal feature um, where it takes your 2D sonar and overlays it on top of the... Uh, uh, the down scan image is a much better uh, way to do this than it is to overlay the down scan on top of your 2D because just because you can see it really clutters up the screen a lot 
So like I said, if you want to do that, do the fish reveal feature on your down scan instead, which I will show you how to do on the structure scan video that I will make next. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Now the next option is going to be our temp graph. And what that does is it's got this little scale up on the corner up here. And so you'll see it shows like 90 to 80 and it draws this little red line across here. And so as the temperature goes up and down, that little red line will adjust up and down with it. And so that way, just you can tell anywhere on the screen what the temperature was at that particular point in time. And so if you know temperature fishing is important to you, that's a good feature to turn on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Now I have my depth line here. And when I click that on, it just draws a line right along the bottom there. Um, that's particularly useful if you're not using uh, the bottom track uh, palette like I'm using. So if you're using just say palette one where all of the colors just kind of blend together, um, that's a good feature to turn on to distinguish where the bottom actually is. But since I don't need it, I'm gonna turn mine off. And let's scroll up here. Now we have our A scope. That is the amplitude scope, which is just basically a vertical flasher. You know, it's kind of self-explanatory. I don't care for it too much myself. I feel it just kind of takes up extra room on the screen. So I'm going to turn mine off. Now the next option is going to be our preview. So what that is, is so you can turn that off cursor only or always. So let's switch it to always. And so you can see it puts this little preview option at the top of the screen here, where you can touch your finger on it and drag it and kind of scroll back across, um, you know, everything that you've already passed over. Now I like leaving mine on cursor only. So that way when it only comes up when I tap on the screen, but then as I go back, and I clear my cursor, it goes away. So that way it's not there at all times. You know, it's only there when you really need it. And so that's why I like leaving mine on cursor only, or as I mentioned, you could also set it to off so that way it never appears on the screen. And then the last option is gonna be our fish ID. Now this is gonna be the old school way of doing it. Um, your fish ID is where you can um, turn on where you get like the symbols, where it gives you the little fish symbols on the screen. You can turn on where it gives you the little numbers for the depth and suppose the symbols, or you can set it to both, where it sets both the little fish symbols and the numbers, as you can see right there. Now, that's more for the beginner user. Someone who's more advanced with it will generally just use the arches on there. But, you know, until you learn how to use the unit good, um, I recommend, you know, turning that on, and, you know, kind of get the hang of um, how to use it and what the fish are actually look like on the screen until you get used to identifying them. Now you also have this last option here, which is your fish ID beeps, to where what it does is it makes a little beep at you on this on here every time it draws a little picture of an icon, um, just kind of let you know that, hey, I saw a fish, look at me, you know, so. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and I'm gonna turn off my symbols there. Now let's go all the way back. And now the last option is gonna be our mode. Now, you have your different modes on here. Shallow water is gonna be for 60 feet or less. That's kind of the general, um, you know, freshwater fishing uh, mode. Now you also have general, which is for a thousand feet or less, um, which is gonna be for, you know, just kind of offshore general use. Now you have your freshwater, which is 400 feet or less. Deep water for as a thousand feet or more. And then you also have like your slow troll and fast troll. And then you also have your clear water, which is just like your freshwater, but it kind of sets the sensitivity just a little bit higher. So that way, um, you know, if you're in just really crystal clear water, it kind of, you know, lets you see a little bit more on the screen. But I like running mine on shallow most of the time. Now, the very last option here is your reset mode. Now, you're going to notice how you get these little pencils right here. What that means is that I've made adjustments to that particular mode. And so if I go in and I like how I adjusted my screen a little bit, I adjusted my ping speed, I adjusted my palette. What that does is it saves that uh, setting to the particular mode. And so that way, if I go to a different mode or I go to like a different lake or something, I can go right back to that mode and it pulls up all my settings right where they were initially. And then if you wanted, you could hit your reset mode and it resets back to all of the defaults on it. So it just kind of allows you to use it, you know, um, have like a little more customization to it, um, quick access to your settings. And so I'm going to go ahead and go back. And that's basically it for all of the sonar features. Um, I, I've got more videos coming for the TI2, so stay tuned. And as always, stay safe out there, guys. All right. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it below and hit the subscribe button and the little bell. This will allow you to get notifications every time I release a new training video for your favorite Lorance product. Also, I wanted to give you guys some really exciting news. We will have our very own website pretty soon, LorantzTrainingAcademy.com. 
It's going to have even more of your favorite in-depth, comprehensive training videos, so keep an eye out. Of course, I'll be sure to let you all know along the way when it will be up and running. And don't forget, when you watch videos from Lawrence Training Academy, the difference is night and day. Alright, I'll see you all next time.